Welcome to a quick walkthrough of the RSVG handheld app used to record uh, plant records. So um, when you start the app, uh, click Explore Other Gardens and download a dataset. Um, for this purpose uh, here, we're going to use the Dawes Arboretum from Ohio. It's a good dataset with uh, also a good map. So I have already have it on in my machine, so I'm just going to click Open at the bottom here to load the, uh, the actual dataset. The machine uh, that you use is either an Android smartphone or tablet or an iOS smartphone and tablet. There are also a few specialist uh, tools available for you. So when you've opened up uh, the front page here, there's three things to, to use. There's a search collection on the top left. Uh, there is the list feature called tasks and then there's the inspections. Uh, in addition, there is the upload and download data set where you can send your changes to the data service and download a fresh data set from the data service. Uh, in addition there's the settings. So when you click search you get this uh, these options. Um, so you can uh, search by accession or item number, uh, you can search by taxon name or you can search by bed or location and then you have a few other more options. Uh, you can search uh, with uh, plants in your vicinity. That only works in this data set if you're in Ohio. Uh, and then you have a few other options, uh, family genus, if a plant has a coordinate or not, etc. So there's a number of ways to find the, the plant you're looking for. We're just going to start off with a very simple example here. We're going to try searching by taxon. So you just use your finger and click on the taxon. You get a nice alphabetic list and an indexer on the right hand side. So if I want to do a Kirkus, for example, I can fast down to the Kirkus and let's say I want to do B color, so I click on the Kirkus B color and then I just click search down in the bottom right corner there and then after you've done that you get a list, in this case 51 records to play with. Uh, and that list can also be searched, you see information about when it was last inventoried or whatever it was, etc. So here I can search by its location or by status, etc. Um, yeah, so in, in addition to the list, you can also click and look at all the plants you have, or in this case trees, and have that displayed on a map. This is a very large arboretum, so, so several square kilometers. So you, you can zoom in, uh, there's some features to show your location and swell. The blue markers are plants that are being, uh, or, the, or the purple ones are alive and the blue ones in this case are what is called being processed. So you can see this is a stump, so not necessarily alive but not dead either. <laughs> so and you get highlights, uh, the one when you click the mark you get the, the details highlighted here at the bottom. And uh, you can also get more details by clicking on the uh, little label symbols. Uh, the other one gives name and the first one gives uh, accession number. Yeah, So you can then uh, navigate yourself through the, the garden here to see which one you're going to work with. And then uh, when you, if you want to work with one of them or open one of them, you just click on the orange uh, or the yellow list at the bottom once more and then it will be opened up. So here we get uh, accession number 19310014 coming up. And here you could see that we have quite a number of trees related to this particular accession. There's 42 in total. And the one we actually selected is highlighted. So that's uh, number CO022. Uh, this particular garden has numeric qualifiers, but that, can, that depends on the garden. <clears throat> if you click on the heading here, you will open up the accession details. Uh, so uh, you will then see you know, species name, uh, other team things like determination details, uh, which you can change if you want to, and comments, uh, plant what type of material and, and, and other things. Uh, so we, we're not going to make any changes there now, so we're just going to close it by clicking the X and go back. And you see there are four tabs at the bottom. Uh, one, and we're going to open up that particular plant we're looking at for this particular accession, that is number 22. And here we can now make changes. So let's say we're going to map this one. We know it was incorrectly mapped. So we're going to move it slightly on the map. And uh, well then we can make changes to the status. We're going to just 
in this case this is a list from uh, this particular algorithm that status list is something you can tweak to your own desire uh, so we're going to say just that this was mapped as a, as a status and we're going to click on uh, we're going to say that uh, use another person you can see we can record material measurements label status uh, and all kinds of things uh, but if you want to then change the um, status or, or other things uh, for example we're going to just put in another person normally it would be you who is actually recording this that will be automatically tagged when you make those changes and we're going to set the date today and then uh, we're going to go over to the map and uh, we're going to zoom in here now uh, to where we are and uh, we're going to you see the marker is slightly bigger <coughs> And then if I click on this edit symbol in the bottom corner, I can then uh, slightly adjust the location of this particular plant. Uh, and if I click the triangle, I can also triangulate in relation to other trees. This is also used if you want to get information about the trees in the vicinity, so that you, there's a betula in to my left here, and there's another uh, plant, let's see what that is, to my right, that's also, that's a Quercus serrata. So now I can sort of, uh, if I have a sort of affordable laser thing, I have a pine that's behind me, I can then uh, triangulate between those three and get a really good uh, measurement. Uh, the final thing you might do out in the field is to take pictures. So uh, the uh, accession here will bring up, you see there are four images on this particular accession. Uh, and if I go in there now and uh, I can then consider uh, doing uh, taking a new one. So I'm just going to take a picture from my desk here uh, by clicking the camera symbol, uh, and those pictures will then be just submitted up with your upload and um, uh, be just attached to this accession and taxon, uh, and uh, you can then uh, yeah uh, either publish it on online or do whatever you like with it. So there's a few things you can do here, like ranking it and changing the uh, image size in in storage storage usage, etc. So when I'm happy with that, I say OK, and then I'm done. So now I've changed the status, I've mapped the plant, and I have uh, also uh, taken a picture. So it's, the workflow here can be very snappy. So when I'm finished, I can just exit uh, uh, and uh, and then if you don't you can save up in the top but it will also remind you whether you want to make those changes so I, I click back here and then the system will um, save the changes which then when we go back you will see that you will be reminded that you have a few pending changes that you need to submit to the to the um, to the app service uh, at the day, end of your day at, at work uh, if there's a fresh data set to download, that will also show up as a marker. The other thing we're going to look quickly at is tasks, which is a list making feature. It's really great uh, to be used for planning work uh, in the garden, but also used in the garden uh, for, um, for add, th add things. But first we're going to create a new accession. Uh, that can be done by from the menu, or we could do it from uh, clicking plus from the search screen. And then uh, you um, are given a f clear sc empty screen where you first need to uh, give a name. And here you can search uh, partially, for example, if I want to search for all the uh, Pariflorum or Pariflora, I get them up coming here and it's an epilobium that we're dealing with. And, <laughs> and then uh, you can uh, record other things like determination level, origin, provenance, etc. We're just going to record provenance. There's nothing else we need to do at this point. And then you select OK. And then the other thing you need to do is to add uh, plants to it or other types of plant material. So you can record uh, in this particular collection, you have uh, herbarium vouchers and other things. But that's a list again you also can manage. We're going to record a uh, new living plant. So we just do that. And then here uh, we just need to then set the area where it's planted. Again, these are codes that you decide. Um, we're going to put a condition and status planted, for example. And um, yeah, 4th of October. 
and other information that you find relevant um, and then we're going to map it so you now see that the center point of this bed is already at, uh, displayed and I can then use the same sort of uh, sort of uh, principle as I did showed you in the previous demo so I can triangulate again if I want to or use other visual, visual features you can also change the maps if you have several types of maps this is just a sort of a map that we call the vert um, uh, yeah, vector-based map, but you can you can have uh, satellite maps, etc., uh, that to choose from. So now I mapped it. I've added information, and I've I'm finished. So this can then be pushed back into the system when you're finished for the day. The final thing, uh, yeah. Now we're going to just go back here and save that. Yeah, and. The last thing we're going to do then, or is, or the penultimate thing, is to look at tasks. So um, tasks, as I say, is a list of making features so it can contain works that you need to do or follow-ups or, yeah, it's a very flexible tool. Um, uh, in our case, we are looking at uh, the possibility to um, So we're going to pick up an example here, which um, I'm thinking we're going to do uh, this. Here's an example, Hamamel is needing images. That's a good example. So uh, this is a list of uh, plants that somebody's created a job. We're going to go and take pictures, and waiting for that moment when all the Hamamelis is in flower, which is a very small point. So we got 24 of them, as you can see. They all still need to be done, and you see a map of them in the garden and uh, so you can then use the GPS to see where you are and decide on the route <laughs> or where you're going to start. Um, the app doesn't tell you whether they are in flower or not but when I click on it I get information then I can bring up that related accession and plant. So we have uh, number 22 here and I'm going to straight into the image tab and now I can snap away uh, and then go back to my task um, and then say uh, completed here on the top. So now I've done the first one of those 24. And then I can move on to the next one and the next one. And eventually I've taken all the pictures I need to do. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah. Uh, there are other features here. You can update all those related uh, uh, plants or accessions in one go with bulk update. Change status, for example, or um, other things. Change location. So there's a lot of power tools in your hands. Uh, yeah, so that's tasks. Uh, very useful. The last thing I'm going to quickly mention is inspections. So that's uh, inspections of trees or long-lived plants where you can record detailed information about the condition of a specific plant. So you typically do the same here. You prepare a, a job, in this case uh, chestnuts, um, uh, where you have 23 in this case. And then when you see the list, it's the same as the task. Uh, where you have the list and you map. And when you open one of them, now this particular plant doesn't have any uh, location, so it's a bit. Uh, it's just a bed in in, in s somewhere in, in the middle of this garden. But then, when you're uh, when you go back to the list, you can then click on it again to open the underlying inspection record. And there, how you can then record condition and value, work needed, damage, measurements, etc. So. Uh, basically there's some risk uh, details and things like that uh, and then when you're finished you just go back and then you do the same you say or oh, you close th that particular job so uh, that uh, when you're done for the day you upload your changes to the service and then one of the staff member will look at all the changes and submit that into the system and then all those changes will then be pushed back onto the data set again so that is um, all we have to say about the RSVG handled app. Have fun, play with it, and um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.